Hey folks, welcome back. Uh, well, Brian and I are flying to Oshkosh right now, as you can see. Um, I did not get the departure out of Orange County because it was pitch dark outside uh, and there was some haze. Uh, so nothing really to see on departure. And stupid me, I forgot to plug in the audio cable uh, to the microphone. So I kind of messed that up. So I have no audio uh, from here on in until we get to Oshkosh. So I'm going to obviously copy and paste some stuff around some stuff. So hopefully it comes out okay. Uh, we're right, right now we're over Pennsylvania and headed into Oshkosh. There is storms out to um, our north um, heading into Oshkosh and we've got notifications from ATC about that. And of course that's me talking to you, but you can't hear me because I forgot to plug in the audio cable. Go figure. Uh, so, you know, we'll, we'll, I'll put some stuff together here and walk you through it until we get there, and we'll go from there. All right, guys, talk to you soon. Okay, right now we're going over Lake Michigan, and uh, that's when we put on our life vests. Uh, so as you can see right there, our life vests are on, and we're at about, I believe we're at 7,500 feet. Um, I kind of forgot where we're at exactly, but Lake Michigan takes a while to go over there. Um, it is pretty far across. We were on flight following to the other side. They typically don't let you do that because it does get very busy, but we were on flight following the whole time. We're getting looking at the approaches for Fisks and uh, uh, all the other uh, stuff we have to do on runways that they're going to make us land at. So right now we made it over the lake. Um, I put on one of the GoPros. Um, it got really, really bouncy. Um, as you can see, there is clouds on top of us. Um, and the most difficult part was uh, we should have been at 2300 um, because the uh, Comanche does not like to fly slow to 80, 90 miles per hour. But there was clouds exactly at 2300. So we had to mess around around 1800 to be careful because a lot of traffic coming in. There was haze. Uh, there was clouds at 2300. Um, so we had to be very careful. So we went with the 18 route. So with the 1800 feet route, we had to be kind of slow. Um, and going in, because of the clouds were at 2300, we had to keep our eyes extra peeled um, just in case you have somebody coming through a hole uh, in the clouds and the layers that they had here. Uh, we did get caught up in a hold over the lake for about 40 minutes. Um, they did have a mass arrival um, at that time, so we got caught up in a hold, um, and we had to go really slow. There was a lot of planes in the hold, and it was tough. It was very hot in the cockpit. It was over, probably over 100 degrees. Yeah, I'm happy there until I get until we get into the hold, and we're all sweating to the point where the paperwork was, uh, every time you touch the paperwork, it'll fall apart because that's much we're sweating. It was really hot in that hold uh, coming in that day, um, but... Here's some more footage. I'll let you guys watch a little bit of it. Again, I apologize about the audio because I do talk about a lot of things on the approaches, on the fiscal, uh, fiscal uh, um, approach, um, the train tracks, um, and also the runways we used and frequency changes and what we did and the paperwork I had I was going over. But unfortunately, again, I for some reason, I don't know why I'm not usually this bad at that, but I forgot to plug in the audio cable. But there's a Comanche 250's panel, um, as you can see there, um, autopilot, uh, beautiful plane. Um, and there is our approaches that we're going over as we go in. So a lot of things to focus on. Um, you have the windmills over to our left. Um, so you got to keep, you know, your eyes on that. Other planes, the clouds, um, the layers and it was a challenge. Um, it's good to have two people definitely going in to Oshkosh, but Brian done it by himself already. It's not as bad as you think, as long as you follow um, what you're doing and the no TAMs that they have available. You print them out like we did, and you'll never have a problem. The, the biggest thing to worry about is traffic. Um, and since everybody has their eyes peeled, um, it's, it's not that bad. But that's the only thing I would suggest really, really paying attention to is the other traffic. And that's what our, our, we were really getting nervous about the cloud layers. As you can see, we're getting more cloudier as we get closer uh, to the arrival. 
and uh, it's it's kind of uh, wrenching a little bit because you don't know who might be going through um, the layer or cloud layer uh, or a hole and not see you um, and vice versa until the last minute. So it, we were kind of nervous on that part of it, but we got through it. It was a great time and besides the hold for a while, um, but we're going to copy and paste some stuff so we can get to Oshkosh and get the landing in there. And there's a Fisk VFR arrival to Oshkosh from a 1.8. So they had 1.8. So we you study that. It's not that bad. There's the frequencies. And then they changed it on us to, I, I believe it was 2.7 now. I, f I forgot exactly what it was. Um, we had to uh, kind of change everything around um, the channels and what way we were coming in. Um, and then they changed it back. <laughs> so to one eight. So it was it was all good. It was all good stuff. And it's a very, very great learning experience to do this because you're working. Um you're working, you're looking, um, got a couple of things going on and keep your skills up high. Uh Brian is studying the approach right now, as you can see, what runway we're using. And um it's good to study and it print the stuff out so you have it, and it's also on the four flight. Uh it's they update that once a year and it's on four flight, but it's good to print it out um so you have it right there. Uh, to view as you go in. So that's basically the it for right now. Um, unless anything else pops up here that I can talk about, I don't think so. Um, besides, we're going in to Fisk right now. Um, then, of course, they tell us to uh, go into the hold pattern, uh, which I would love to have sh uh, you to hear that and hear the tower, how they talk, but there is no audio cable, and I certainly apologize for that. So I was kind of pissed off when I'm starting to edit this stuff. Like, hack them, I can't hear myself, and that is exactly why I can't, <laughs> because there is no audio cable plugged in to the microphone. Okay, I'm going to you know, move along here, fast forward here, and see what else I can come up with until we land. So as you guys can see right now, um, at 2300, right above us there, is the cloud layer, and it's gotten bouncier, as you can see, underneath the clouds, uh, but we, we had a hard time staying slow, um, but we have flaps down, gear down, and trying to keep it slow, their distance a mile apart from the traffic in front of us, but as you can see, the train tracks are right there in front of us, off the nose of the airplane, uh, so we're at 18 um, right now, going into uh, 27 in Oshkosh, uh, so we should be there very shortly and off to your one o'clock, you should start seeing the runways and the um, airport come in. Uh, we're still following the tracks in, um, and once you get to that location, basically you follow the tracks in, depending on what runway, of course, again, it's all in the no Um they'll tell you what to do. So rock your wings, um, you know, they called us the, uh, um, they call, what do they call us? The Cherokee. They call us the Cherokee rocket wings and the, and the color of the airplane. Um, so we're still following it. The, air, the airport's coming in now at your one o'clock and uh, we're still going, following the tracks down and then we're going to make that turn for the downwind. Um, and uh, basically that is going to be it. Um, we're going to keep flying and flying until we get down. Um, it was tough keeping it at 80 miles an hour. They did tell us to slope if we could because of traffic, um, but we we tried our best that we could. As you can see, the flaps are down right there um, to keep that nose up and keep the speed, um, the stall speed lower, um, and we have the gear down as well. It would have been awesome to be at 23 because nobody was really up there, obviously, because of the clouds. So a lot of performance planes were having the same problem we were having of keeping that uh, that 80 miles per hour to 90 miles per hour. And don't forget, we're heavy. Um, we are in the envelope of safety, but the plane is heavy. Uh, we did fill up um, before we came across the lake there. Um, and we have a lot of luggage, as you guys know. So the plane is heavy and flying slow. And we, you know, and, and coming into this airport, um, trying to hit your dots, trying to focus on everything else going on, you must. Pay attention a thousand percent also on your airspeed. The last thing you need to do is stall a wing and have a problem. Um, there was a V-tail, um, it's, it's online, 
that stalled and uh, broke his left landing gear on a turn um, because it's a lot of pressure. It's a lot of things to focusing on. You got traffic, you got ATC, you have what dot you have to go on. You're trying to figure out what's going on and getting behind planes and trying to, to speed up or slow down, depending on what they need you to do. Uh, try to get off the first uh, taxiway or on the grass. Um, so you can kind of not pay attention to your speed, but you must pay attention to your speed or you'll stall and have a huge problem. So right now we're base. Um, I forgot now what uh, what dot they told us to land on at this point, but we're on base and it's right in the base to final. There really is no you know long base to a long final. It's basically base to final. And because it was so hot in the airplane and everything else going on, my camera decided to die. Of course, right here. So I have no footage of us landing, and I apologize again. Hey folks, welcome back. Um, kind of just woke up, took a nap. Um, first day at Oshkosh, it's Saturday, July 20th, and uh, nothing really going on this morning quite yet, but you notice there's a lot of planes already here uh, that has landed. We had some weather come through and some bad weather actually come through with all the mud that's around here. And there's some planes coming in right now. Um, so I didn't film a lot coming in because I left in the dark. Um, Brian and I left in the dark. You know, nothing really to record, obviously, at that time. There's a lot of haze, so nothing really to record either. So it would have been boring um, besides us discussing the approach and the arrival here at Oshkosh. And they switched runways on us. Um, so a lot of stressful points. We got held up in the, the hold pattern for about 40 minutes. We had a big arrival come in, so we got held up there, and it was hot. It was really hot to the point where the iPads were overheating, the Stratus he has in the airplane was overheating, and there's a lot of planes that were in a hold pattern until we finally got in. So it ended up getting really stressful, so we had to really focus on um, our paperwork, what we are doing, uh, changing frequencies, runways, um, and the bugs are killing me. So that was day, kind of day one. It's only five o'clock here now. Um, so, but more video to come. I will edit stuff that will look a little better for some flights. We, some things we did videotape coming in. Um, I know one of the cameras overheated. <laughs> it was so hot in the airplane. It was bad uh, to the point where I actually got a, a really bad headache. I was sweating really bad, and I was obviously dehydrated all at the same time. But we made it. Um, so. We're going to take a spin around here shortly and get some footage for you guys and some airplanes. But this is just not even starting yet. Um, tomorrow, which will be Sunday, will be the big arrival stuff. Um, so, see you guys in a bit. It's Brian. Hey, Brian. <laughs> He's always yelling about something. <laughs> i see you guys in a bit. Folks, good morning. Day two, Oshkosh, and it is 6 a.m., 7 o'clock my time in the East Coast. So, good morning. Um, quick recap of day one, I'm still waking up, it is that um, very hot, hazy, holding pattern for about 40 minutes, and it was really hot. Uh, and of course, the, uh, we were going into the Comanche group, and they were, had all the spots filled. So we had a taxi all the way down to the uh, South 40. Uh, we're supposed to come in the middle of everything. We're down at the South 40. Uh, in the mud, the plane got all muddy, and so Brian's not too happy about that. Um, but hey, we made it here. So it's day two, it's Sunday. Day two for me. Uh, technically, everything starts tomorrow on Monday. So today is just basically going to walk around and there's going to be thousands and thousands of planes landing today. Um, there was a couple hundred yesterday or more, but today is a, a big fly-in day. So I'm going to set up along the side here of the taxiway and start taking some video footage, all that fun stuff. So go get some coffee, stick around, and we'll see you guys in a bit. Wisconsin is set to say you guys know if you're, not, if you're not from here beautiful state the people are really nice 
Um, and we went to Walmart yesterday just to grab stuff for the uh, for the camp to uh, for some food and, and some grilling um, equipment. And people even at Walmart are actually out to help you. They like ask you, do you need any help? We're gonna help you find something. The whole time I was there, and it was amazing. So not all Walmarts are bad. So uh, really nice people here, and thank you. Uh, for all those employees at Walmart who helped us. See you guys a little bit. Look how beautiful it is this morning. Quiet. And if you want some drinking water, there you go. Old military tanker. That's where you can get your water from. And of course, the potties. All right, guys, see you in a bit. Hey, guys, so the red barn behind me, as you can probably see or maybe not see, um, every morning I typically go there, and the same people that I've seen the last three years hanging out first thing in the morning. So, family affair here at Ash 2019, like for the past 50 years. This year is the 50th anniversary of Oshkosh, the EAA Air Venture Flying. So, uh, we should hopefully have arrivals today. Um, they closed, I think, the field down um, because the ground is so saturated, and the last thing they need is planes to get stuck in the grass and all that fun stuff so it looks like they're gonna open up the airport around 1 o'clock hopefully today today is Sunday the 21st of July all right guys uh, see you in a bit hey guys so we're in the EAA flight museum so take a look at this cool place Wright Brothers replica, of course. That's pretty cool. This is on the first floor. There's a whole bunch of planes in here. To the second floor. Let's go up the steps here. You have planes hanging from the ceiling. Awesome place. All the Apollo stuff. <laughs> and of course, it's a kid screaming. So I figured I'd give you a quick tour, but if you do come here, a place to check out. Definitely a place to check out.
so much history at the EAA exhibit here, museum, whatever you want to call it. St. Louis. Look at that. Real plane. Pretty cool stuff down here. Pretty cool, pretty cool. I know I'm probably boring you guys, nothing too exciting, but there's awesome planes here. Definitely check out if you ever come here. If you come to Oshkosh, you gotta check out this museum. There's a second floor. We have a bunch of Apollo stuff here. And yesterday, on my grandfather's birthday, uh, July 20th, it's when the, we landed on the moon 50 years ago. There's a whole bunch of Apollo stuff here, um, astronaut stuff, which is really cool, and we'll go check that out. But I can be here all day showing you these awesome planes, um, some I'm not too familiar with at all, a bunch of military stuff. Nineteen thirty three, that's an old one. a very quick tour. Now, this is pretty cool. You can tow your airplane with this. And put the wings on it. Look at this. Show you there. Put wings on this on this car right here that's behind it, and you can fly this car. Through the 1950s and 60s, including use as a traffic control monitor for KISN radio in Portland, Oregon. The Eurocar also received national exposure on the CBS television adventure program. It's called the Aero Car. Look at this guy, he's chilling. You look at a lot of the history with aviation, and it's amazing if you think about it that GA started aviation with well, the Wright brothers. That was in the airline, so now today it just turn into a huge airline industry for um, commercial, military, but when you look at aviation history, 
it's all general aviation pilots. And then also when you want to move up um, into the airline field, you start out as a general aviation pilot, it's typically training on a 150 or a 152 or a 172. This is pretty cool. So aviation history is awesome. All right, I'm gonna head upstairs. The seat's going upstairs. Okay, we're on the second floor here, and just some more experimental planes. That's where we're at downstairs. And this guy right here is flying with the birds. Some cool hangers here in a cool plane. And this is boring, I get you. There's so much stuff here that I can't possibly bore you guys any longer, but uh, definitely check it out if you come to Oshkosh, EAA uh, Museum. So much history here. And I actually love history and aviation history. It's just amazing how they kept on trying and trying. Astronauts 50 years ago landed on the moon. It's amazing. Um, but check out the museum if you come here. There's so many more places to look at uh, for kids, adventures, and so on and so forth. Um, but I don't want to bore you any longer. Uh, we'll get outside and look at other planes. And tomorrow, Monday the 21st, I'm sorry, the 22nd is where all the stuff starts. And I'll obviously do more stuff with videoing then. All right, guys, see you later. Okay, guys, we're outside of the exhibit here, the museum, whatever you want to call it, and we have a lot more stuff going on on this side of the airfield. Um, they have the helicopter ride. There's two helicopters that are constantly uh, taking people up. Uh, they don't even turn their, their helicopters off. Um, but it's all the way out here. And this continues on and on and on with all the hangars you see. Um, down this way. And that's where the helicopters are landing over there.
But again, definitely check out this museum if you come here. I don't want to talk too much inside because it's kind of quiet. Um, but definitely check out the museum. There's a lot of history. I love aviation history to begin with. It's just an awesome thing to research and learn about. Um, definitely check it out. You have to check out the museum here. Um, hoping, hoping that uh, the airplanes are landing soon. They're way behind schedule because of the grass was so wet that the airplanes that had tie downs on the grass cannot land and, can, and um, they can't land because they can't taxi to their spot and they don't want all the clogging up on the taxiway. Uh, the only planes that were allowed to land were the, were the planes with the big tires and the ones that were parking on the concrete itself. So today is not a good day for a bunch of planes flying in. We were supposed to get about you know, a couple thousand planes coming in today, or more than that, um, and a couple did not happen. So, we'll keep you updated, and I'm gonna probably edit the last couple days, not much going on because of the, the delay in landings, and because of the weather, and the storms that came through, and the ground really wet, um, so it wasn't too much I could really put on, but a couple of Facebook posting that I did. Um, but, get us up and running, guys. See you in a bit.